Hello everyone and welcome to another episode of The Patricia J Show. Today we are at West Lodge where I sit down with performer, musician, host, and overall inspirational Shiro, it's Julie Black. Well, it's an episode I've been so excited for, sitting down with not only an artist and an entrepreneur herself of the Shiro movement, my friend, my sister, Julie Black, hey, on girl. the Patricia J Show. <laughs> yeah. Thank you again so much for being here. It's you, Julie, are somebody who have, has done everything. You have many hats. First and foremost, though, you are a family girl. You yes, showcase that on your social media. She's social, socially savvy. Yes, and you have this unbreakable bond with Mama Aretha. She yes. is amazing. Sorry, Ag woman. Agatha. Agatha. Mm -hmm. Mama Agatha. Agatha. I love that. Yes. She's a great woman. We'll talk Thank about you. her in more details. 81 up. years young. Well, yeah, we'll talk about her later. We're going to learn a lot from Julie today. So, Jules, let's focus on you first and foremost, though. Woo, let's right. take it back to the age of 21 when things oh, all wow. got started for you. You're yes. young. Don't, don't overwhelm me. You're young. Almost like fine wine, girl. <laughs> it it is. gets better with time. It definitely does. <laughs> Chocolate. So, bring us back 21. to 21 year old Julie. How did it all get started for you? Musically, it, that, it got started for me in Toronto at 21. Yeah. But it got started at 14 in New York, in fact. A lot of people don't know that part of my story where mm. I got signed to Sony. Wow. I was, I was, I got signed, uh, Little Vicious. Ah. Patra. Oh. Panda Case. <laughs> we all got signed to Epic. When I was 14 years old, um, this artist named Tim Dog. Mm -hmm. I've never told this story on television, so here we go. It's a first for everyone. Right, seriously. Um, <laughs> he was doing an all ages jam okay. in my old neighborhood. Well, close to my old neighborhood in Keelan Shepherd area. Yeah. And North York. And I was there being a, a, a teen bouncer with my sister. Really? My sister was 19. I was 14. 14. If I came with her, I would make 50 bucks a night. Oh, at 14, so that's at 14, a lot. that's balling. Heck yeah. Right? <laughs> and, um, and the artist, I heard him faint, like, anybody who has talent, who could come up here and sing, who oh, could wow. rap, who could? And I asked her, I was like, Debbie, Debbie, can I go, can I go? And I feel like I'm gonna cry. And she said, yeah, go. And, I got discovered right then. Really? He, he said, I'm gonna send you guys a management contract. We had like no money. My You're mom- you kidding, so my, it yeah, happened. My mom threatened, threatened his life, basically. <laughs> said, okay. my mom. That was the, the, the legal advice, right. you know, legal counsel. <laughs> I did one year. Every Friday, I'd leave grade nine, yeah. get on a Greyhound, yeah. 12 hours to New York, New York, get there Saturday morning, sleep, record all Saturday afternoon to evening, get mm -hmm. back on a bus Sunday morning. Goodness. Back to Toronto Sunday night, back to school Monday. Did wow. that for one year until I got signed to Sony. So I owe that to everything I am today as far as my tenacity and resilience when I think about it. When I came back to Toronto though, I went into Fresh Arts with the Circle Movement. Circle? Right? Cardi? Zoom. With Cardi and Socks <laughs> and yeah. Claire and all the rest. And so being the voice of hip hop yeah. is what propelled me to becoming Julie Black as people know it, you know, at 21, right. there was a venue called the Bamboo. Are you familiar yeah, with the Bamboo on Green Street? Back in the day, yeah. Iconic venue. Yeah. Right. Mm -hmm, my 21st very. birthday that year, wow. I was performing the only three songs I ever had written in my life. Yeah. And uh, the president of Warner Chapel, uh, New York, John Tita, mm -hmm. was there having drinks. He and was he just there. Just there. Yeah. Just kind of looked over his shoulder like, okay, who's this girl? And he came up to me and then dirty, smoky bar, and he got on his knee, <laughs> and he took, took my hand, and he kissed my hand, he said, I'm not worthy. And he asked me, did you write these songs? Wow. And I said, yeah. And he said, I want to offer you a publishing deal. I, just like that once I, again? Yeah, I just graduated from Seneca College. Seneca? And, yeah. Seneca. Seneca, I love yes. my right there. <laughs> I just graduated. Wow. Um, that June, and, I was, and then I did this event that summer, and come September, I was like, all right, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to do my music. Goodness. I'm going to do it full time. Julie, you are one of the most spiritual people I know. Oh, Your connection you. to Source is so yes. strong. Yes. Do you believe that this is exactly the path you should be on? This is your destiny. Absolutely. Even when I try to um, do it my way, right? I, you know, I believe in God. I personally declare Jesus as my Lord. Mm -hmm. um, I encourage everyone to 
love your source, your divine source, and not, don't be ashamed of your faith. Right. Religion is the one thing that divides the world. Yes. But if we just know that it's about love mm. and loving your neighbor as yourself. <laughs> the rest is history. The truth is, and especially for the sister girls, we need to love ourselves. Big time, and that's hard. Right, so if you can't, you can't love somebody else if you don't love yourself. Very true. Right, I've been on a deep journey, especially over the past three years, mm -hmm. I would say, where I let go the whole notion of what Julie Black does, and just focusing on who Julie Black is. Very different, two very, very different things. Very different things. When did that happen for you? When was that click for you? It clicked over when I was um, in deep, deep despair. You know, what happened? heartbreak is a, is a serious teacher. Love heartbreak or career heartbreak? Love both, really? at the same time. At the same time. The same time. But I'm telling you, you know, in order for something like that word breakthrough, for instance, if you yeah. think about running a race and you're running through the finish line, yeah. there's a room you gotta break through the finish line, Boom. but something has to break. So that's where it's helped me a lot, recognizing like, okay, I've been desiring this breakthrough personally. Okay. And if I really want to get to the other side of it, something has to break. <sighs> right? And let it not be you. Right. Mm -hmm. But recognizing, okay, all right, now let the games begin <laughs> now. I from love that. From this point on. I love that. Right? Yeah. And to, to still, still have enough grace and humility and kindness and forgiveness mm -hmm. and accountability because in every situation, both parties play a role. Yeah. No Very matter true. what, even if you decided to not communicate your true feelings, mm -hmm. you played a role in sustaining the pain. How did the industry treat you? Because you're surrounded by the Circle fam, right. including Cardi, Sox, all those guys. Right. But you were the female Canadian voice of hip hop. Right. First of all, talk to us about that because that's a strong role. And was there support from the industry? I kind of rolled into the role. Yeah. <laughs> so one thing I can say, people have asked me many times, did you ever feel pressure to be thin or pressure to sing certain types of songs? I felt no pressure, I've experienced no racism. What I did experience is um, opportunities being handed to somebody else mm. of another genre like, or another genre yeah, or yeah color too okay color, color and genre okay when the word urban became popular right the industry went away from actually saying black music to saying urban that was quite the shift big shift yeah. they got rid of the r b categories mm -hmm. on the award shows completely yep and I now it's that. urban where there are other people in the category yeah. that were able to be in other categories, right. but we were limited to one category, Darn. right? Once I was able to recognize that I'm the, literally no one does what I do, nobody on You're earth. Right. God broke the mold, made <laughs> Patricia J, broke the mold, yeah. made Julie made Black, Julie <laughs> broke the mold, yeah. right? So that lifted all types of pressures off of me. Right. The biggest challenge is the financial yeah, challenge always. in this country. Oh, big time. My slogan is, I'm greater than the life I've been living. Wow. I am greater than the life I've been living. living. And I look around my life, I'm like, okay, I, I speak, you know, I motivate. You do? And all of these things that have become a commercial thing, this is what I was just, I, I just do. So Julie, how do we monetize this thing? Right. Right? You have to get good at things. Yeah. Let's talk about the positive side though. Yeah, that for sure. first time you were nominated. Yeah. What was that moment like, and what what was what was it for? What was the single? It was for rallying. It was for rallying. It was yeah, for rallying. Yeah, yeah. And uh, that Juno Awards was at uh, Cops Coliseum in nice. Hamilton. Nice. Damn. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And uh, I sat behind Celine Dion. Oh, you did. I remember I was still working at Royal Bank. Oh. In my wicket, <laughs> signing autographs on withdrawal slips. So being there, see, I remember Celine, and uh, being so nice. Yeah. Right. And I'm like, okay, you know what? Okay, let's get, stay humble. Keep going. And she's Celine. You're looking at somebody who's a mogul, right? Right. And fast forward to 2012. Right. Where I opened for her at the oh, Jamaica I Jazz Fest. Yes, yes. And we got a chance to sit and talk and she had her rollers in and I, <laughs> I, I, was, I was able to tell her, like in 1999, I sat behind you at the Junos mm -hmm. and was able to see you, to see you ahead of me and yeah. needed to see you ahead of me. And to recognize, and now Absolutely. you're in my country, my home country, you know what I mean? Like that was her first time in Jamaica. Wow. 20,000 people That's okay. She's kind of cool like that though, yeah. right? She kind of, she spreads herself she like spread, that. Yeah, but yeah. she didn't know she had a fan base in Jamaica. Wow. That was her own voice saying, 
look at all these people. Yeah. Right? There's a world outside of Canada. That's right. There definitely is. And that's what I'm saying. Oh. This is what the internet's doing for us and becoming, becoming a neighborhood now. Talk to me about community. Talk to me yes. about Toronto. Right. What does Toronto mean to you? Oh my goodness. Our city. This is our city. I could cry thinking about Toronto. Yeah. There was a time where there was a time where I was angry at Toronto for no reason. Okay. Right? What triggered because that? The career stuff. Yeah. When but I had to I had to humble myself and okay. say, Julie, if I never ever release a song in, for the in anywhere else in the world, mm -hmm. Toronto, especially the Canada, has been really good to me. Yeah. As and a you're black, true black woman. Very true. Like this is as black as it comes. I'm black. <laughs> There's no denying yes, that I'm the hood, queen, black. I got my black, I got a wide nose, yeah. I got a big booty, I'm black. Oh, no, for real, Canada sees Julie. Yeah. And that's why that's I appreciate it, right? Yeah. About being on eTalk, about being on Canadian Idol. Yes. About filling in for Marilyn Dennis when she would take vacation. I know. Filling in for Gian Gameshi when he would take vacation. I'm big like, stuff. I started thinking about like, oh, they're calling on me. Mm. I never had to be, hey, hey, could you? They're no, not they, saying we want the black girl with the big nose there you don't go. have. Her nose is very cute. They're yeah. saying we, we need Julie. Right. We want Julie. She needs to be here. Right. What's that like? On today, it's so humbling and yeah. it's, it, it brings emotion, you know? Mm -hmm. um. Oh, Julie. <laughs> oh. I'm grateful. I'm happy for you. You know, like we go so far back. We do, we do. You know, and this is history. Mm -hmm. It's royalty. It's classy. It's yeah. what Canada's about. Yeah. Oh, you know what I'm saying? I love you so much. Look, what, <laughs> look, you're emoting. You're taking the emotion inside because the struggle has been so real for the us. It's been real. I feel you. You talk about coming from the hood. Mama and I, just the two of us, we grew up in Metro housing. Yeah. You know right. what I mean? People stealing our laundry, breaking yeah. into our car. You know, I know you've seen a lot too. Yeah. Oh, yeah. How do you Murders, survive it? Everything, drugs. right? I was like the neighborhood funeral singer. Oh, God. Look. I've buried more of my childhood friends than family. Wow. You know what I'm saying? People have to realize yeah. that we're not here looking for pity. No way. Right? No, 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 no. Like to celebrate what Canada has done for us, yeah. what we've done for Canada. Yeah. It's amazing. You're such an empowering woman, Thank but you. you also empower women. Thank you. What's it like to have that role now? Because that's part of your destiny. Right. You know that, right? That yes. strong voice, that emotion. Yeah. All of that is very empowering and inspiring. Thank you. It's a blessing. It I, is, I, yeah. I like showing people all of me because when you see me and you see 5'11 and 6'3 in pumps yes. and this, you know, muscles and power and power, yeah. when people see and hear me be vulnerable and say, look it, you know what, I was molested as a child. Oh my God. From 13 to 15. Really? My neighbor and, you know, and to be able to say, you know, I, I was able to come to a place of forgiveness. It took, I didn't tell my mom until I was 33. I'm Are 39. Are you kidding? And I carried that shame, what I felt was shame, right, for all those years. But it helped me, now I say, well, as I speak to women and men, say, you know what, you need to shame the shame. Absolutely. The only person carrying the shame is us. Yeah. So in order for us to, to shame it, get rid of it, right. we have to speak about it. That's it. Let it go. Oh, right? God. And right, so and it's all part of the journey. It's all part of my story. I I wouldn't choose it, but I wouldn't change it. Because it it in a funny way made you who you are. Absolutely. Right? Absolutely. And it's I feel that I'm able to help other women and, and boys and men to avoid the landmines. Like, if I have, there's a landmine, just skip over. You're gonna have your own. <laughs> yeah. Oh, You're yeah. gonna gain your Many. own wisdom, right? Mm -hmm. But if I see one, and I know there's one there, I'm gonna share. So you could at least skip over that That's one. That's it, try to avoid that try one. Try to avoid that right. one. Right. You mentioned detox. Yes. You got seven to, years. Yeah, seven full years. Oh, girl, when I heard that, I supported you beyond yeah, belief. I was like, finally, you. a sister that I can look at in Canadian television right. that I identify with. Thank you. Right? Yeah. So once again, playing a very strong role yes. of empowerment. What was that journey like? I love that you said the word breakthrough. Um, Suzanne Boyce. Yeah. Yeah. My hero. Oh. She, was, she was watching like outtakes. And I respect her because she she worked her way up. She was yeah. a producer back in the 80s. Yes, yeah, she was. Right? And for her to sit and spend time and just going through tape, I wasn't on, I, I, I basically bum rushed 
<laughs> Tanya and Ben. Yeah. I jumped in there shocked and was acting like what I apps? usually act. Yeah, what apps? And you you went, right. When you mentioned destiny, when something is for you, mm -hmm. and it's now in hindsight that I'm seeing it, right? I, now, you know, in foresight, I, I, I'll, I'll appreciate every step of the journey that much more. Right. Because she saw something in me that I didn't even know no. existed in myself. Yet. Right? Mm -hmm. Exactly. And so for her to, it, it started with the Black Eyed Peas store. Yeah. And her saying, I'm going to send the camera. I'm not going to send talent. Yeah. You be the talent. I wasn't even hired yet. And I remember I sent her, I had a meeting with Suzanne. And I said, look it, I didn't go to Ryerson. Right. You know. Seneca. I didn't go to all that stuff, <laughs> right? And get all this media training, right. et cetera. And she said, I trust how you were raised. Wow, that's what she said. I'll never oh, forget that. God bless that. I'll never forget. She wasn't worried about, and remember, I was raised in the hood. Yeah, I know. She didn't say I trust where you were raised. Wow. I trust how, how you were raised. Mama. 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 Right? And so everything I, I did with eTalk, they allowed me to be myself. Are you kidding? Completely. That is so good to Most hear. Most times I wasn't even on script. I just asked them, what point do you need me to right. actually hit? Yeah, your key points. Key points. Yeah. And other than that, it was, I was free to be me. So we're talking about eTalk. Yes. You're in front of the camera. Mm. Your most memorable moment, I'd have to say, not to answer for you, but your Jay-Z interview. Jay-Z interview is right? a very, very super memorable moment because we had a, we made a spiritual connection. I had seen him, yeah, on Oprah. I seen him on Oprah a couple weeks before that. Okay. And he was speaking about forgiving his father. Oh, wow, that's deep. And at that point, I hadn't let go of my resentment of my dad, mm -hmm. right, with him and my mom getting a divorce. Yeah. And it, it resonated with me. He's just like, until I forgave my dad, my true blessing, like my, I couldn't step into, as big as he was mm -hmm, and mm -hmm. is, for him, he hadn't arrived yet, because what happens in our mind mm -hmm. and in our in our body only we know. So he knew that that was the block. Really. And so we did a the, we did the classic questions question, and yeah. I just said to him, "You inspired me to call my dad." Really. Yeah. He his face just kind of went white. He's like, oh "Wow," gosh. you know. Yeah. We we had like off camera conversations where. Because uh, remember, he had a concert that night, and mm -hmm. his PR was like, no, no, no. He's like, no, no, no. That's amazing. Like, right? Yeah. Like, and I remember I asked him, uh, my, I always ended my interviews with, I am successful because. Oh, and you make them answer? And I make them answer. Nice. I remember he said, wow, I am successful because. You made him think? But I remember what Shakira said. Shakira said, I am successful because I'm significant. Oh, wow. My success lies in my significance. Significance. You shine on that stage, Julie. Thank you. The wow, kink the in king. my hair, 106 shows. 106 shows. I have to give a special thank you to Gemini. Absolutely. From um, well, now on G. G. Because yeah. she called me about that audition. Oh, really? In the world of acting, I haven't done mo a lot of acting, mm -hmm. but what I realize is no one shares information. I know, they don't. Right? You're scared. You're going to take something right. away from me. Gemini called me like, look, there's this role. She was gonna go for it. Da, da, da. She's like, you gotta go for it. Wow. And that was my first time ever wow. acting. So getting the part and doing it, doing 106 shows and understudying a 75 year old woman. Like, I, I, there's two roles. I was praying that woman never got sick because I was like, oh, <laughs> 75 and never know, right? Heavy, that was a lot, lot of, wow. lot of script to memorize. But right. it was, a, it grew me a lot. That's a beautiful moment, meeting Oprah, oh. singing with Aerosmith. Please Bill, tell me what Bill that Clinton. was like, meeting Oprah, the queen. Meeting Oprah was, it was like anti-Oprah. She's oh, super yeah? chill. It was a private XM radio event yeah. where, uh, unfortunately, Dr. Maya Angelou didn't like, she didn't take elevators. It was on the 80th floor. Oh. So she was not going up there. Oh, no. Um, it was it was incredible. I went to the washroom. They, they were waiting for her, waiting, waiting, waiting. And yeah. I was like, I got to pee. So I went to the washroom. <laughs> Came back, she's out, but she's sitting in my chair. Oh, we're sitting in your yeah, chair. Yeah, so I was like, okay, am I supposed to tell Oprah to get what up on my seat? Because I was at the table with Gail. Yeah. I was like, so I went, I said, um, she said, oh, am I in your seat? I'm like, no. Yeah. She's, what? Do you say okay. okay? No, so we were, I didn't have, we didn't even take a selfie. It wasn't even like selfie oh, time. No. She said, okay, let me just grab my bacon. She grabbed the bacon with her bare hand, <laughs> gave me hugged. That was it. What's your favorite role? You have so many. What do you think is your favorite role? Being a bridge. Being, being a, the bridge. I love that. People have felt comfortable. 
to tell me their deepest secrets, to tell me their dreams and their aspirations. Right. So that's my slogan. I'm the bridge big enough for everyone to cross. And you've changed so many lives. What is it like to have these women that are losing weight in your hands? Right. Have these women who are finding a new lease on life with their health mm. because of your inspirational words. What's that like? And what's it like being a Shiro? Talk to us about the Shiro movement. Uh, wow, Shiro, to Shiro, empowered in my skin. Yeah. I have my best friend in Kichi, yeah. Robinson. Uh, we've been friends for 21 years. Wow. We recognize that we've been in the worst of places together. Mm -hmm. And so why not celebrate and encourage others as we are in a better place, mm -hmm. heading to greater, recognizing that there's greatness and there's greater, mm -hmm. and greater is the goal. Every day we have the opportunity to be greater okay. than we were yesterday. Yes, Right. absolutely. So this is our mantra. Imagine a life where you, Patricia, yes. wake up every morning mm -hmm. loving your shape. I do, yes. Right? Loving your spirituality. I do, yes. Loving your health. Mm -hmm. Loving your abilities. Double check. Right? Loving your personality. Triple check. Right. And loving your experiences. Quadruple check. There you go. Right? <laughs> Seriously. Yes. yes. Get into that place where that shapes your life. Right. And it's for men and women. This isn't come, come see Julie speak and then she leaves. Right. Come see, you know, Patricia speak, do a keynote, and then she leaves. Yeah. But we spend the whole day together. We laugh, we cry, we sing. In a place of we safety, worship, right? Yeah. Yes, in a place of safety. Yeah. 240 oh, women wow. is growing on its own. Goodness. When it's time to face our own demons, time to put the mirror up and say, oh, I'm in pain. Right. Oh man, I'm jealous. I've been bitter. Oh, I haven't forgiven my dad. Oh my gosh, I'm still hurt over this divorce. Oh, my kid's in jail. Yeah. Then, it, then people don't sign up for that. No. Right? That's vulnerability. Right. Right? That's power. When yeah. you can actually lead people to the space, Right, so. How did you do it? Prayer. Mm -hmm. And I'm telling the power of positive thinking, it's a movement, it's a ministry, and I realized that I was focusing so much on, what's the album cycle? Right. It's a chart number. When's the tour gonna happen? Exactly. Da -da -da. The things That's that at the, the end of it all don't matter. Right. right. What I realized is, your success is what you do right now. Mm -hmm. But your legacy is what they're gonna say when you're gone. I want to talk about a moment in your life that has been the sweetest. You've had so many moments. Oh my goodness. Moments where messages have come to you, moments where you've broken through, moments where you've survived against all odds. Mm. What has been the sweetest moment? Yeah, I'm feeling emotions again. Are you feeling it? Yeah. Come on, girl. <laughs> Think it, feel it, share it. Yeah, sweetest moment happened recently where a very close family member was told they have cancer. Oh my gosh. And being able to say, okay, that's a diagnosis, but what's the prognosis? Mm -hmm. What does God say? And asking the doctor to leave the room and holding hands and using my gift and singing wow. right there, just saying, okay, bless the Lord, oh my soul, and all that is within me, bless his holy name. I just kept singing wow. over and over again. Wow. He has done great things. He has done great things. He has done great things. Bless his holy name. And just right there, yeah. hearing that. You're and going, making right, me in, going oh right into worship. Yeah, yeah. Like nothing. There's no Juno, no Grammy. Yeah. There's nothing. I, 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 couldn't, I, I couldn't even believe that I was able to ask the doctor to leave and say, you know what? We need to worship right now. Met the Queen, Jay Z, wrote for Beyonce. I've done yeah. none of those things because you don't know you're strong until you have to be. Oh, yeah. Right? Oh, yeah. Let's talk about the future generation, yeah. the next Julie Black. <laughs> she won't be you. Right. But that girl who may be watching today, or that young boy who's watching and knows that they want to be a singer, they want to share a message through their voice, whatever the platform it may be. Right. What's your advice to that person? My yeah. number one uh, piece of advice is establish your why. What's your intention? Why do you want wow. to sing? And what's your expected outcome? Okay. <laughs> what were your answers? Why did you want to sing? At six years old, I realized when I opened my mouth, yeah. this voice came out, mm -hmm. eyes closed, smiles happened, hands went up. Wow. So I, I knew at that little 
Okay. At six years old. At six years old. So I knew that I was a healer at a very young age, even though I didn't know what was happening internally. Right. So that's always been my intention. And that's why now, when I veered off of that intention, the road got hard. Okay. You see? Of course. When I got back You're into the intention. You're not supposed to be over there, right? Right. Yeah. Doesn't matter if his bumps still on course. Yeah. Right? So that's my number one piece, is why and what's your expected outcome. So what was your expected outcome? What did you think all this was going to come to for you? <laughs> not all this. <laughs> Seriously. Like, yeah. it's us raised a church girl. Yeah. So really, joy and peace and happiness and all that stuff that are unseen. <laughs> and so, I mean, I remember I got into a little bit of a deep, heavy conversation with someone who thought that I tried to become Julie Black, tried to just... be famous, tried oh, to be really? a celebrity, that I've always wanted attention. I'm six foot tall, I can't help it. <laughs> but I'm not an attention, attention seeker. Attention finds you. See, I'm not an attention seeker. Yeah, I you've never been like that. No, I recognize yeah. I a, my presence is now, now that I, 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 I love on it, mm. my presence is a present. Yeah. I bring my presence as a present. Yeah. And, and it's I a gift to us all. I reckon I don't have to say much. Mm -hmm. Hug a stranger, you know, give a smile. Yeah, it's you so I mean? effortless. Yeah. But it's so hard for many people. What can be that breakthrough message to allow people to see the light, if you will? Yeah, try right? it. <laughs> Just try, to try it, you'll love Just it. Try it. Yeah. Try it. You try to live that healthier life. Yes. You're beautiful on the outside. Thank you. You want to make sure the inside was beautiful yeah, as well. It matches. It does. If you squeeze an orange, yeah. you shouldn't get apple juice. <laughs> no, you, you shouldn't. shouldn't. My mom says it in her own country Jamaican way. Yeah. That sin tastes sweet. Sin tastes sweet. Yeah. Sin, sex, liquor, drugs, whatever. It tastes sweet. That is. But powerful. You don't even really, think about it like that, What's eh? it really doing for you in the long run? Ah. It tastes so sweet. Hamburgers, french fries. It tastes sweet. So you choose to be a vegan? I choose to be a vegan, yes ma'am. How did that happen? That happened spiritually. Okay. Last December, um, I went on this journey to, to, again, have my insides match my outsides. Being a vegan tends to be this religious thing, though. Yeah. I'm a vegan, I'm a ha ha. I'm not religious <laughs> like that. So I watched some documentaries and it was a journey spiritually with a group of women. Mm -hmm. We decided, and some of the women that wanted to lose weight, that was the first thing. Yeah. Like, okay, because I juiced for 17 days and then I went to Cuba. I would have kept going. Yeah. And I went to Cuba on the 17th day and did a week by myself and it was just magnificent, so spiritual. By unbelief yourself. By myself. Good yeah, for I love you. traveling by myself. It's Good amazing. for you. Um, and so back to being that bridge and being that light, yeah. like, okay, I'll do it with you. Everything I do or I've helped people with, I don't give a formula and not do it. It was beyond the spirituality. I, I went vegan to help my voice because I was having a lot of inflammation. Okay. Uh, my best friend, my other best friend, Miranda, she's helped me understand where that comes from. And my voice is my tool. It's my everything. It is. So I'm struggling with my voice and it's having hoarseness and really? digestion, this and that. I was like, okay, what do I do to take down all this inflammation? And it was go plant-based. As simple as that. Simple as that. So I didn't become vegan to lose weight. See, people are doing things for the wrong reasons. Yeah. We do it for long life, for to have mental alertness, to have energy. Mm -hmm. That's the expected outcome. You've seen the world. The world yeah. has embraced you. Wow. But I want to ask, mm -hmm. when all is said and done, mm -hmm. Julie, what do you want people to remember you for? She was generous for my generosity. And, and everything that I've done. Yeah. Serving in music, serving, literally lifting physical service. You know, I'm heading to Kenya to help build a school. Oh, you yes. know, like pay for someone's Timmy's <laughs> that's behind me. Yeah. Like service. It doesn't take much. It doesn't. Like the, the music will be the soundtrack oh, to my generosity. I love that. Yeah. That's, that's what I would like. Thank you so much for Thank your time, you. Julie. I love you, girl. And I, I love you so much, and I am so proud of you as well. It was such a real moment, and that's what we're here for, for real talk and real conversation. So I want to thank you so much again, Julie. And you as well at home. Don't forget, we're socially savvy, just like Julie. Follow her on Instagram. Right. She gets Julie good. Black, M-I-S-S. M-I-S-S, Julie Black. And yeah. we are hashtag The Patricia J Show. And I'm your girl, Patricia J, creating content for you. Yeah. Thank you for watching. We'll see you next time.